today we are answering the question, I have cheap rent. Should I still buy a house? So there's obviously a lot of different factors to consider and every situation and circumstance is going to be so different, but I have three reasons why you should buy a house, even if you have very cheap rent, because I do really believe that. And I I feel very strongly about this. Spencer's a little more, um, what's the right word? Neutral or not neutral, but he can understand both sides more. He's a little less like, this is the only way. First, I'm going to share three reasons why you absolutely should buy a house, even if you have cheap rent. And after that, he will share a little bit of a different perspective as to maybe why you should hold off. Maybe it Mm -hmm. might be a good idea not to buy if you have cheap rent. My name is Spencer. And I'm Mariah. And this is Real Estate with Mariah and Spencer. And (laughs) Spence. 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 Spencer, same (laughs) thing, right? But um, we're here to share knowledge, real estate knowledge. This is our full-time job. We are based here in the Northwest, Oregon specifically. And we just love what we do in getting our clients from point A to point B. Whether you are buying, selling, or you live in Oregon, feel free to contact us. We are always happy to send you a qualified real estate professional in your area to get you where you want to be. And the first pro to buying a house, even if you have cheap rent, is a quote that I heard from a homeowner this earlier this week. And what their quote was, when I first bought my house or when I bought my very first house, it wasn't for very much, but at the time I thought I was spending a lot. And I think this is really relevant because Every, as a real estate agent, all you hear is how crazy it is that this is what you can buy for you know half a million dollars in our area. Right. That's literally all you hear. But this person who, who said this quote, the house that they bought, they thought it was so expensive. It was $30,000. Houses will never. I don't care what kind of housing crash happens yeah. or where the market goes. Things go up and down, but they're never going to be $30,000 ever, ever again. Pro number two is you are missing out. Um, if you do not buy, even though you have cheap rent, is that you are missing out on so much equity. Um, there was a gal I was chatting with not too long ago. She was telling me about she bought her house um, in the late 90s. I think it was like 1999, she said, for $200,000. Okay, it was a foreclosure, so it was kind of a deal at the time, but still. Mm-hmm. She bought it for $200,000, and now it is worth well over a million dollars. And if they would have continued to rent and pay their cheap rent, they would not own a million-dollar asset now. And so... Mm-hmm. That's just another thing. That's just the beauty of homeownership. And lastly, my last reason why I think that you should buy, even if you have cheap rent, is your rent is low right now, but there is no guarantee that it's going to stay that way. Your landlord could decide to put the house on the market and sell it next month. And the next person to buy it, there's a really good chance that they're going to you know, want to fix it up and raise the rent because that's, you know, oftentimes that's what happens when homes are exchanged by, you know, landlords exchange homes. And so you really just can't guarantee that it's going to stay low. So those are my three reasons. I think they're very important reasons though. There's not a lot. They're not, you know, we could sit here and talk about more reasons, but those are just three things that I think are just, you're really missing out on and are just super important to well, it's super buy relatable. A, house. Buy a, house. a lot of the things you're you're saying today is is relatable to the audience, you guys, myself, um, because we've all heard this story. We've all been to grandma and grandpa's house, for instance, because they've lived a long life. Usually, you're the second generation coming off of their bloodline, and <laughs> you walk in their house Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, whatever the holiday may be, and they've lived there for probably twenty plus years, and they own their house usually. Um, outright and they don't have any mortgage payments or anymore but you always want to ask them hey Graham Gramps um, how much did you buy this house for I want to know what their yeah. answer is <laughs> and that is like an easy conversation piece if you're another realtor view on this to just gain some real estate knowledge as to what the market was like then versus now and then share what is happening in today's world yeah because truly this this statement is so true we are in a different world 
A completely different world. Uh, what was your example? Thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars is what? Ninety nine. F- no, 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 no. That no, wasn't. That, that Ninety nine was the one 200. for two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. The one for thirty thousand dollars was I didn't. I didn't know the year, yeah. but they were just saying at the time when they bought it to them and to everyone around them who was like, you know, we always hear last time we bought and the time before and the time before we definitely heard from people, yeah. um, well-meaning people, you shouldn't buy right now because prices are so high and like how are you paying like why are you paying that much for what you're buying and i'm sure they were hearing the same thing because they thought thirty thousand dollars was a lot to spend on a house at the time there's always somebody out there um Um, and and a lot of times that's true though a lot of people are right yeah our homes prices inflated of course they are yeah but could it get worse oh you betcha you betcha it can um thirty thousand dollars we mentioned that one what what could you have bought your home for i hear that story because i'm gonna relate it to my grandparents they were buying houses for fifteen thirty thousand forty five thousand dollars seventy five thousand dollars nothing over a hundred grand sometimes in the later 90s these deals would come up but mostly this was the 70s and 80s when they were making this and they were carrying paper on those deals and i think that is fabulous and terrific how can we do that in today's world well here's the deal You guys as our audience, if you are out there and you're renting a home right now, that might be why you searched and found this video, this title. Whether you're in your car or viewing us on your laptop and and watching this video, if you have a low rent, that's totally fine. A month and a half ago, I was just at an individual's house. He's currently renting. Super cheap rent. In our in our area, it's like over twenty three hundred bucks on average to rent out a home, an actual home. This is an eighteen hundred square foot home I was in, three bed, two bath, with a shop on an acre and a half. Unbelievable properties getting to rent rent out. And by the way, rent was only twelve hundred dollars a month. So he fit the perfect bill as to the audience, you guys that are viewing this video. And this is the scenario. Well, Spencer, what should I do? I, I, you know, I don't really want to pay rent anymore, but I do want to own a house because he hears us talking. He's he's local here in Oregon, and he wants to make a move financially to maybe set him up in the future retirement fund, maybe mm. because there's nothing better than buying a piece of property and letting that two hundred thousand dollar asset grow into a million dollars. How how unbelievable is that? Where you buy and hold, and the hardest parts to hold. Don't get me wrong, but it's hard to hold when you're sometimes. able to just be okay being boring. Yeah, that's when you know you got it made. Because eventually, your home will be paid off if you you know stay there or continue to to just own it, and then you won't have that payment at all. And obviously, if you're mm-hmm. renting, that'll never happen. You know what I would tell? So you told him, you told that guy in that situation, he had a great property to live on, super mm-hmm. rare to find, even just to like purchase and mm-hmm. in the area, and very cheap, inexpensive rent, only twelve hundred a month. Yeah. It's v- like that's very hard to find in our area. Mm-hmm. So you told him you should stay there. Well, this was the scenario. And I gave him a couple options because I don't want anybody to feel stuck. Right. What was your options? My my option was this. What? Hey, um, can you call your owner and see what the deal is? Does he want to sell this house right now or in the next six months or so? And if so, make a deal with them. Make a deal saying, hey, you'll put this much down, you'll put this much work into it, and at the end of five, ten years, you'll make him a, a final balloon payment. And, and the reason that deal would work out is because this particular owner that owned the property doesn't live here, doesn't live anywhere close. Oh, he's out of state. He's okay. out of state. And he doesn't even know the property's condition, yet the tenant, the individual I was talking to, is fed up because he didn't even have a heat uh, system oh. last year. He was working off of uh, space heaters. Wow. And the owner is simply neglecting to take care of the property, which it's still a very valuable property, even the way it sits. But the current uh, tenant is just like, what should I do? Should I be doing work to this? And I said, no, don't touch a single thing if you don't have a deal constructed as to you working towards ownership because it's just ridiculous to do that. He knows all the work, but also that comes with a price. So if he could work and negotiate a deal with the owner, that's the way to go. Try and create a carry deal with the owner. If you want to be rooted here for the next 15 to 20 years, why not? Do you love this property? Yes. Okay. Let's do what it takes to make a deal at the right price. Now, if the owner comes back and the price isn't reasonable, yeah, we got to walk. We got to move on. But if you don't have the right job security, for instance, 
Maybe you haven't been working the same job for over two years. You don't have two years worth of W-2s or even a year of employment history. That's a problem. So if you're staying in this cheap rent, that's not a bad deal. Right. If Stay you can, while yeah. you can because where, where else are you going to go, right? So we also have to be logical about the lending process. And that's why we always encourage you guys, go talk to a lender. If you don't have one, email us, go to our website, find our contact info. I will send you a lender that is well-qualified and can get you pre-approved in 24 hours. Mm. Oh yeah. And he's local. All right. So that's out of the way. Find a lender, ask the right questions. It's like you don't want to quit your job until you already have another job lined up. That was something that was told to me throughout my whole life. My dad would always say, well, don't quit your job if you don't have something lined up, you know, because then we're just dwindling our thumbs, hoping on hope that you might not find a job and yeah, you got mouths to feed, right? Mm -hmm. So it's that same concept. We want to do our due diligence and homework before we really open our mouths and open a can of worms. So make sure you're capable to make a home purchase. If not, and you're in a low rent situation, that's where I recommend usually eight times out of 10, stay where you're at. Okay. That's really good. I agree. I think that it is a really good idea in that situation con to contact the landlord and at least see. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a, always a good chance they don't have any interest in selling, right. but to right. at least try. Mm -hmm. And now if you're in a situation where you just have really low rent and doesn't seem like your landlord's going to be doing anything with the home anytime soon, you know, they don't want to sell it to you, but you're just living there and enjoying that what under what would the term be under average rent you mm -hmm. know cost yeah. you're just living there and enjoying that what i would say is stay there continue to live there for as long as you can and enjoy that low rent however you should still buy a house you should stay there and enjoy the low rent and in the meantime because your rent is so low be saving money yes. for a down payment and then take that money and go buy a house that's a investment property. Go buy a rental property. You that's what I would do if I was in that situation. Because then eventually when your landlord does decide to remodel and raise rent or fix it or sell it or whatever they end up doing and the rent is raised, because you know eventually that'll happen, um, then you have somewhere you can fall back on, you can go move into or keep it as a rental and you know figure something else out. But that's definitely what I would do. What you just said though is like one of the number one problems I think us as Americans have and what? it's saving money. The, yeah. the average person in America, what, has a few hundred bucks in their checking accounts at the end of the I month after no payday? We just simply don't know how to save. And if you mm -hmm. have a cheaper rent and you're not saving money aside, shame on you. Let's turn that around right now because if home ownership is really a goal, truly a goal, you need to make a life change. And if you haven't simply yet, do it now. Make the decision. There's nothing wrong if you've wasted a couple years and, mm, man, I haven't really looked at my expenses. Now it's time. Somebody's voiced it. I have voiced it to you. This is a real goal of yours. Let's make it tangible and possible. And it starts by you knowing your monthly income, knowing your monthly expenses. And now how much can you set aside per month? Okay, how long is that going to take you? Keep the same job so you can have work history to make your purchase. I think that's a really big factor right now in America because yeah. people are wanting to change, switch jobs, become entrepreneurs. They don't want to be held down by the man or their job just the rules have changed since, you know, the last three or four years and they yeah. don't want to go along with the new policies. And, you know, I get that we are in America, land of the free, <laughs> totally right to do that. But ultimately there are sacrifices short term that are going to make your life even better 10, 15 years down the road. Right. That's another thing. I am always surprised by how many people are unaware that it actually does affect the fact of you being able to get a loan or not is your job history and how long you're at the same job yeah. or at least the same line of work. Lenders like boring. And so it's always a good idea to talk to a lender um, because even if you know, you're, you you don't think you're going to be able to buy for a few years, if you think you're a few years out, your lender can at least point you in the right direction so you can be making the right decisions now that will help you become a homeowner sooner rather than later. So Absolutely. Um, thank you for hanging out with us today. If you have any real estate related questions, feel free to comment below and we'll see you guys next week.